In the last lecture, we talked about the blockchain. Now, the blockchain doesn't work in this situation, with Bitcoin, for example, without miners. Now, you've probably heard the term mining before a bunch of time, if you've ever heard of cryptocurrencies. What mining is, is the validation of transactions, right? People who validate the transactions that are happening on the network. Now, for your efforts as a miner to validate these transactions, you get paid, right? You get paid by a cryptocurrency reward. So in Bitcoin, for example, when you solve a block and you ensure that it's correct, the blockchain creates, generates out of thin air, a few Bitcoins that you get as a reward. Now, other than that, you also get transaction fees by everybody who made a transaction and you get all of those for yourself for solving this block, right? So you're basically contributing uh, uh, to the network, to keeping it working. Okay. So let's see here. Uh, through an example, how this works. So you have the blockchain. And in every block, right, again, we have block one. You have a list of transactions. And then what happens is what you want is you want to validate those transactions and you want to confirm that this block is correct. So it goes on top of the blockchain. So you here is what you call a miner. And miners are people who are listening to the network. And for this example, the Bitcoin network, they're just sitting there listening to the network uh, for any transactions so they can get it, confirm it, put it in a block. Now, for their work and for their efforts, they're going to get paid from each transaction a little transaction fee, right? Now, in the other lecture, we've talked about, well, what happens if you have bad actors and they just want to spam the network and say, oh, this is a new block and this is the correct block too, and it's not true, this is fake. Well, to eliminate that, what we're going to have the miners do is we're going to give them a puzzle to solve. We're going to give them a cryptographic puzzle. And the puzzle is basically like this for Bitcoin. It's basically, we want you to take all this block and we want you to add a number in, in it. Let's say whatever number, you, you pick a number uh, uh, randomly, okay? And we want you that when you add this number to this block, we want you to use the, the hash function, the SHA-256, okay? And the hash function of this, we want it to give you, you know, a string but we want the first, you know, I don't know, uh, 42 letters of this string to be zero, right? A lot of zeros, then we have uh, the uh, uh, the rest of, uh, you know, the, the, the sentence, the, re the rest of the string. But we want the first 42 letters to be zeros. So what happens? You take the block as a minor, you put in a random number, you do the hash, it doesn't give you that. So you change, you try another number. It doesn't give you that. Uh, you change, you try another number. It doesn't give you that. You change, you try another number. You keep brute forcing and trying random numbers until you get this result, right? So doing this is gonna require a lot of energy, right? Because you're gonna have to use a computer to try and solve this puzzle and it's going to take a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of time, electricity, resources to solve it. Now, if you're able to solve it, then you can send the block. Oops. You can send the block to the network and say, this block, I solved the puzzle and I'm ensuring you guys that this block here, okay, this block is correct. This block. And you send it on the public blockchain uh, and then block one goes here and uh, it's confirmed. Now, if you solve this puzzle and you put it here, it doesn't mean that it, it's, it's correct. We need more miners to confirm it. So then we wait until another miner was able to solve the puzzle and he gives us the same thing that you gave us, the same transactions, right? And then we would be able to say, you know what? After multiple confirmations from miners, we can agree that this block is correct because there is no way that somebody is going to come in and try and 
alter this information and put a fake transaction in here and then try to solve this puzzle. It's going to take him so long. And then once he solves it, if he sends it, the other people are most likely not going to say the same thing as him because he's the only one who altered that and they're not going to alter it. Why? Because if they have something bad uh, uh, and they send a bad block, example, let's say Bob here, our bad actor, had block one, but altered some of the information, was able to solve the puzzle, and then sent his block on the blockchain. Now the blockchain already has a block one. So now we have two versions of the blockchain. Version one, which is here, and version two, you know, it has block one again, which is here. Now, we don't know which one is correct. Now the other miners, are they gonna come out with this block? Probably not. So they're gonna be using their power and they're probably gonna be solving or confirming this block. So we're gonna be continuing with this block. And since we're continuing with this block, everybody, when they're looking at the blockchain, they're looking at the longest chain. And since this one is not the longest chain, nobody's gonna work on it because they know that this is not the truth. This is the most recent version of the truth that we can accept. So it makes no sense for somebody like Bob to try and give fake information because nobody else will be doing the same thing. And the only way he would be able to lie is if he himself had so many miners or so many computers working for him to try and solve the, 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 the equations that he had more than 51% of the miners. But then through game theory, it actually wouldn't make sense because it would require you so much more money to set up all these computers and to make the system work to uh, game the system and steal a little bit of money. You would not be able to steal more money than it would cost you to be able to have more than 51% of, uh, of, of, you know, uh, of the system, of the network, right? And that's for Bitcoin. Obviously, there are some other cryptocurrencies that are not robust, but uh, Bitcoin's blockchain, for example, nobody has been ever able to uh, you know, uh, game it. So miners, okay, their only job and to mine cryptocurrency and solve this equation, you acquire, you know, uh, before back in the days you can mine on a computer, but now mining is so hard because the, the puzzle is so hard that you need stronger and store stronger equipment. And now the only way to mine Bitcoin, for example, is by buying specific machines that are called ASIC miners. Uh, but just to solve one of these equations by yourself would take extremely a long amount of time, right? So people actually pull together and we're not getting uh, deep into mining in this course because the objective of this course is investment, right? But we need to understand that, right? Uh, you have to pull together with people and put all your hashing power because you're calculating the hash function of this, right? So that's why a lot of people are talking about hash power. What? How many hash powers do you have? Because how many... Uh, hash functions can you try, you're brute forcing, uh, per second uh, to solve this equation. And if you don't have a lot of hash power, it might take you extremely a long time to solve this equation and somebody else will solve it before you. So people pull together and they try to solve this puzzle as soon as they can. And the first people who solve it get the block reward, get the transaction fees. So right now, one for Bitcoin, uh, each block takes about 10 minutes to produce, meaning the protocol made it that to solve this equation with the current amount of miners that exist should take about 10 minutes to solve it, right? So sometimes a bit more, sometimes a bit less, but with all these people trying to solve, brute force, randomly it takes about 10 minutes to solve that puzzle. Now, what happens as there are more and more miners? Well, Bitcoin's protocol wants it to take about 10 minutes to solve a block. So what they do is they make the equation harder to solve. So they say, okay, well, now we want 43 zeros. So then it becomes even harder to solve this equation. So for them, and again, each protocol, each cryptocurrency has different protocols, but for Bitcoin, they want it to stay at 10 minutes, so they make it harder. Now, the reward for each uh, block mined or confirmed right now for Bitcoin is two and a half Bitcoins, 12 and a half Bitcoins. So if you solve a block, 
you're going to get 12.5 Bitcoins, right? Uh, now, 12.5 Bitcoin, now Bitcoin is trading, let's say if Bitcoin is trading at 10,000, now it's actually 6,400. But for example, if it's trading at 10,000, then you would be getting $125,000 worth of Bitcoin, you know, for solving it. So obviously, it's extremely hard to solve it. You're usually going to, you know, uh, pool your machines or your ant miners or your computers with other miners so you guys can try to solve this equation together and when you get this money you split it accordingly with the other people in the pool and that's how miners work they group together to you know have better odds the odds are the same but uh, to, to get better chance of you know only confirming one every you know uh, 20 days while well, you confirm one bitcoin uh, more often, but it's with other people, uh, so you split it with other people. That's where I confirm one block, not one Bitcoin. And you also get the transaction fees here. Now, for Bitcoin, this block reward is going to decrease every four years, and at one point, I think in 2044, uh, there should be no more blocks reward given at all, and miners are only going to gain from the transaction fees. Mining is its whole separate business and it's an extremely hard business uh, at this point you know especially with the fluctuations of cryptos uh, you have to do this at a high level uh, uh, you know to make it work for you so miners actually are very um, serve a very important role in the blockchain and that is to confirm and certify these blocks and keep them in order and they have incentive to do that. And through game theory, uh, they have no incentive to go against it. And they have no incentive to try to break it. And, you know, uh, to a point of there's no miner that's really going to want to spend so much money to steal so little money in the end. It does not make any economical sense. And then he would be shooting himself in the foot because if he does own that much and he's so invested in a currency, then... If you do something like that, you kill this currency and you shoot yourself in the foot. It makes absolute no sense. And this is why it works very well, right? You have the blockchain, transactions come in, miners confirm it, they get paid, they have incentive to do the right thing, they do the right thing, and the blockchain continues. And nobody needs to trust anybody. You don't need to trust any of these miners. Some of them could be bad, but the protocol and the system makes it that if they are bad, it doesn't matter what they're doing won't work. And that's, you know, how miners really uh, make the blockchain work. This, these miners is what we call, they are doing POW, which is proof of work. Uh, proof of work is basically, they solve an equation to prove that they did a lot of work and they're not just spammers, right? If they were spammers, they wouldn't do all this work. So when you're doing a proof of work, like these miners are doing by solving uh, this puzzle, we trust you because you've you've done you've done this, and if you did this, then you know you're trustworthy to a certain extent. And uh, you know that is mining. In the next lecture, we're gonna see you know how that adds to the blockchain.